Beth Harrison with Dallas Native Voice, and I'm sitting here again with Jason Browning with Certainty Home Loans, and I want to talk about credit. That is so confusing to me. Who even comes up with that stuff? Well, that's a very good question. Um, you know, the three bureaus are kind of the gatekeepers of your uh, of your credit scores okay. and, and your credit history. So, when you run my credit, so I give you my Social Security, yes, and you run my credit. Are all three equal? Are they different? Why are they different? How does that work? Well, it's all going to be dependent on what credit or what creditor is reporting to which bureau. Is that, oh. That's going to start dominating what score either takes the lead or is in the middle or the bottom. We take the middle score, uh, the lowest middle score of each borrower, if there's two borrowers, or the lowest uh, or the middle score of, uh, of one single borrower. So one company more people will put their information with this company than with this company, so my credit score might look better because this one didn't have as much reporting on it as this one did. That's Is that what we're that, saying? That's absolutely correct. And there's no regulations to these creditors that say you have to report this stuff. So, well, I mean, there's certain times where someone have a mortgage or a car, it's like, well, yeah, I've been paying this for 15 years. Well, they're not required to report it. Ah, oh, wow. That certainly makes it tough for you, doesn't it? Yes, and it does. for us as a consumer. Absolutely. That's crazy. So, let's say, what is, a, what is the minimal score you need to be able to buy a house today? That's a very good question. Uh, so, there's, it's twofold, really. Mm -hmm. So, for a standard you know, government you know, FHA loan, okay. a 580 credit score, we'll go down to a 580. Wow, okay, that's low. But that's... on the flip side of that, if you have someone that is just, say they, they want to be off the grid, right. they don't have any credit, so not, not a bad score, but no score. And I have clients like that. They, they've worked really hard to not have credit cards and consumer debt and they pay for their cars and they've been renting so they have rental history but that's it they have no credit so can those people ever buy a house absolutely i'm doing a loan for a gentleman right now he's lived in australia for the last 13 years okay um and he does have rental history so we're able to get that for 12 months and then you would just go in and add you know two alternate trade lines you know get, a, get your cell phone bill for 12 months okay you know, get your water bill for 12 months and then you're able to run that through the desktop underwriter and that can determine whether you can qualify for a mortgage or not. Well, that's good to know because people work really hard to stay credit free and then it turns around and haunts them when they try to do something like buy a home. Or... It, exactly. You're penalized for doing the right thing in your mind. <laughs> exactly. Um, so you're, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So um, let's just say that my credit score is not great okay. uh, for whatever reason. Student debt, didn't pay on time, whatever. Is there anything I can do to improve that, or, or what, what, how does that work? Yes, absolutely, there are ways. The first thing that I would say is, you know, get with your lender mm -hmm. and see where you're at. Even if you're not looking to purchase for a year, maybe there's nine months of work that you need to do. Okay. And then you'll be ready in a year. You know, some people will wait, most people will say, well, I'll just wait for a month or two before I buy, and then, the, then they're six or nine months down the road before they can do anything. Right. So first things first, get your credit looked at. Not through Credit Karma, through an actual mortgage company and that way you can see what you're working with and then at that point it may be it may not be as bad as you think huh, uh, okay. and it could, again we're doing three scores so we take the middle you may have one that's really poor but the other two get you qualified interesting okay so then our our word to a consumer would be start your purchase process early absolutely so if you're thinking you want to buy a house this year it might be wise to sit down with you and just go over what's there, and if it is fixable, what do they need to do to fix it? Uh, for example, if you'll pay off uh, your furniture and get your car down, you know, several payments, we'd be okay. Right. I mean, it could be as little as something. If you make ninety-seven dollars for this one credit card, right, you get seventeen points and you qualify. Okay. I mean, it could be very, very minimal. Uh, there's a lot of that we can do in house. You don't have to talk to a credit repair person. And there's some very minor things that you can do uh, to get your scores into a qualifying level. And then you set the stage of going, hey, we're in a competitive market right now. I'm going right. to start my search now. I know what I'm doing. Right. I know what I'm able to do. So. Right. Nothing's worse than getting to that point of being excited about buying a house and find out that you, that you can't. That's, um, that's always disappointing. So we want to start that early. And uh, even if you're not ready to buy in the next handful of months, get ahead of that game. And then I know once you go under contract, do not put anything on your credit that's really important the, the main thing there is do not open any new trade lines do not go out right. and get a new car I know you're so tempted to go buy a new couch for that house right. wait until you close right wait until you close because that can have an adverse impact on your credit score and we do a soft pull behind the scenes before closing 
and we'll know if you open a new debt and then they have to count that in your debt ratio and it could disqualify you. I've had it happen. I had someone buy a new car and it disqualified yeah. you. So. And, and it's my understanding, uh, so the consumer can shop, although everyone goes to the same well for their water. So interest rates are interest rates. It, they, they don't change from one part, you know, one company to another. That's, it's just, it's, it is what it is. That's right. Uh, but you can pull credit for the same line item. So if I want to pull credit from this lender or this lender or this lender, it will not affect my credit because it's for one purpose. Correct. And again, it all depends on your timing. Okay. If you do it just a, a ton in a short period of time, right. uh, then you could have had an adverse you know, uh, action to your credit score. Okay. Um, if you shop one or two lenders, you should be just fine as long as it's over, you know, within like a 60 to 90 day time frame, right. you should be just fine. Uh, and then that way you're not being held, uh, having it held against you because you're shopping. Okay. And it, but what does cause a problem is to have your credit pulled from say your insurance company, your car dealership, and a credit card company, now you've hurt your credit. Absolutely. It cannot be repaired for a while. Absolutely. And another you know, uh, misconception out there is when you get a credit pull for a mortgage uh, that it just automatically lowers your score. Right. Now the thing about shopping for a mortgage is just because you get pre-qualified or have your credit pulled, you're not obtaining new debt. You're shopping for debt. Good point. Okay. Credit card, you have new debt right away. Mm. No new debt when you're shopping for a mortgage. That's, that's a really good definition for that. Gosh, a lot of good information. Thank you so much, and thanks for listening. And as always, you can find us on all social media at DallasNative.com and wherever you are. Thanks for listening. Thank you.